get the show on the road. All right. So welcome everyone to um, the first meeting of 2021. Happy New Year. Hopefully this year is a better BIA year than last year. Let's let's here's hoping. Yay! <laughs> so I'm gonna start out with today it looked promising. <laughs> yeah, it did look promising when last year at this time. We had lots of plans in place, didn't we? Yeah. Um, okay, so let's start out with the approval of the agenda. So is there anything you'd like to add to the agenda or delete from the agenda at this time? I didn't I can't see find it. Okay. We didn't see an update with um, Nancy's edition. No. Nope, you guys can add that now though. Okay, yeah, I see that. Okay, so um, we should put that under new business perhaps, or? Sure. Um, sure. Okay, I'm gonna put Nancy. Okay. Um, anything else anybody would like to add or subtract? Nope. Okay, so we'll get going as it is, and then if there's something comes up, we can. I'm sure we can amend it as we go. So I need a resolution to approve the agenda with the addition of Nancy's uh, new business um, for today's date, January 12th, 2021. Do I have someone to put the motion forward, Heather? And do we have a seconder? Thanks, uh, Sarah. Okay, perfect. All in favor and we're good. Okay, so it, does anyone wanna disclose uh, any pecuniary interest or conflict of interest at this point in the meeting or? If later on you, you're welcome to too, if something comes up due to new business. Okay. So let's go ahead and approval the minutes of December 8th, which I don't know about you guys, but it feels like a lifetime ago, <laughs> December 8th. Um, so I'm looking for some folks to um, make a motion to approve the minutes of December 8th, 2020. I have the motion and it looked like Doug left a second the motion and yep. all in favor. Okay, great. So we'll we'll approve the uh, minutes from December 8th. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into um, something new and exciting here. Uh, 5.1 on the agenda, the Santa float. <laughs> it's wow. almost embarrassing at this point. Forgot it. Seriously. This is Groundhog Day. So can I speak to that then? Since I think it was sort of left in my, it was sort of left in my, uh, uh, up to, to do something about it. So anyway, um, the Santa float. So I've been given a lot, a lot of thought, and at the last meeting you directed me to ask for assistance from the township, specifically in the form of a, either a partnership or store and or st storage of the Santa float. So uh, anyway, I've been talking to the mayor about this, and I don't know whether you saw the uh, response that the mayor sent to Sarah today, uh, Sarah, who's with the, 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 the other clerk. Um, I don't know what her last name is, but not you, Sarah. Sorry, yeah. off, but anyway. So essentially I have it here and uh, just one second and it's not good news from that perspective, but just bear with me. So it says, he says, hi, Sarah, I will not be able to join you at the BIA meeting tonight. I would like to follow up with a question regarding the search for storage for a parade float. I asked once again, if there was any available space within Clearview facilities, the attached confirms that Clearview senior management cannot provide any storage space I hope this will conclude any further discussion or expectation of storage space. Thank you, Doug Measures. And the uh, mm -hmm. Doug had got a, a letter or an email from Mike Ron that said, hi, Doug, I double checked with Dan and Terry. At present time, we do not have any additional storage space. We're going to have a hard time storing the new Christmas decorations. So, okay, I, I mean, I can't, I can't uh, refute that. I mean, it's, uh, it is what it is. So, uh, you know, so uh, I talked to Doug you know, over the last few weeks, and I said, well, you know, maybe we could pair up with the Stainer Kinsman Club. So, uh, because they supply the float for the Stainer Santa Claus Parade. So, uh, uh, let me see here. Yeah, so, uh, and, and he seemed keen on that. So, uh, tomorrow is our final budget meeting that we have at the township. So, what I'm thinking is I, yeah, I can do a couple of things here. I can either, tomorrow I can ask, or I can request uh, that staff take on supplying partnership with the Stainer Kinsman, a Santa float for all of the municipalities, you know, Creamore, Stainer, New Lowell, Nottawa, Singhampton, you know, because everybody's got their own Santa float. So why, and, and the big thing, especially from the mayor's point of view, is that he says, we're all one community here in Clearview. And, he's, and uh, so, you know, I can approach it from that perspective that we're all one community, so let's have one Santa float and uh, and do it properly. 
And uh, in which case I would ask that, uh, you know, the township supply some money towards that and maybe do it in conjunction with, uh, with, with the standard kinsman and such. And then each community will, you know, will have access to that Santa flow. So I can do that or, you know, I, I got looking at, at it and I'm not sure whether you realize or not, you probably do, but I didn't know this. Do you know that you have a reserve fund of uh, $8,694? that's just been sitting there for 14 years. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Sarah, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Yeah, not, now you're not. Anyway, uh, yeah, no, you, I, couldn't I couldn't hear you even when you were unmuted there, Sarah. Uh, yeah, so basically I got looking, because we're dealing with the budget tomorrow, I, got, I was just uh, scrolling through and there's something there called the Consolidated Cream or BIA Reserve Fund. $8,694 is in it. And I went back and as far as I can go back, it's had that amount of money in it since 2014. So that's been six years. So I talked to the, to the treasurer today, to Kelly McDonald. I said, Kelly, tell me about this uh, reserve fund that the BIA have. And she said, well, I don't really know too much about it, Doug, but she says, let me look into it. So she did. And she tur turns out that reserve fund has been sitting there since at, at least 2004. So let me just get my other glasses on here. So uh, now I'm not sure whether that whole amount of money was in it. I'm so sorry, uh, Lori. I'm sorry, Sarah's you dropped off and I'm sure as treasurer, this is kind of important to her. So I'd like to just hang in there till she's back here. She's back. Sarah, um, yeah. Yeah. no, we still can't hear you. There's no way I can can't hear you. somehow, is there? On, on Kayla, can you do that? No. Um, I found anyway. once that I had actually muted my entire computer with the little mm -hmm. mute button in the top left hand. Sarah's pretty oh, good. Oh, no. I know, I know. She's pretty good. Sorry, Sarah. I have no idea you how to help you. She lost her voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sarah, do you want to call me or something? Hold up can, some paper. I can maybe uh, <laughs> put your cell phone here to the computer. I don't know if that works. We have some sound. No, she's writing notes. This is like old school, new school. <laughs> Basically what you just missed while you're writing a note is that um, Doug is talking about a Cremor Reserve Fund that is yeah. sitting at that of $8,694. Yeah. Oh, I can't yeah. read. I have to... Respect my computer. Oh, you have to restart. Oh, reset Oh, my for computer. spreadsheets? Sure. Yeah, <laughs> okay. All right, see you guys. Anyway. So regarding this reserve fund, so Kelly McDonald got back to me today and she said, uh, from what I can tell, it actually uh, goes back to before 2004. It looks like it was an annual surplus. So funds that had not been spent in the year got put into that reserve fund. And, uh, and then she says, so far as its distribution, so how it can be, sp be spent, I would, su I would suggest any BIA projects would be a perfect fit for it. So what I'm getting at here is you have $8,694 in there. Hang on a second. Let me just make sure. Okay. In addition to what our other, our, our current balance is. Yeah, I, I assume. So, I mean, if you want to use that, I, like at tomorrow's, uh, at tomorrow's uh, meeting, I can ask that that money just uh, be turned over to you for storage. If you wanted, like you had talked about renting a storage unit. Yes. And uh, that would probably cover like five years of rent. Oh, yeah, of a storage can. unit, I suppose. So Doug, anyway, I, and I can ask for that at the at, at the uh, at the budget meeting tomorrow, and I don't think that anyone would oppose that because it's not like we're adding taxes to uh, you know yeah. uh, to anybody. This, this is money that belongs to you guys. So yeah. okay. so which uh, anyway? Oh, Sarah's back. She probably are you still muted? Can you actually, hear me now? Yes. yes. Can. Yeah. Thank goodness. I had to update everything. I don't know. I was just on Zoom yesterday. Sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. So the existing reserve fund sits with Clearview Township. Is that, that's true, Councillor McKenzie? Yeah. 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 It, Doug. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It, uh, it sits with, with Clearview Township. And according to Kelly, it can be used for, uh, it's, a, it's a discretionary reserve. So basically, I think what happens is that. The money that went into that was uh, like when the township had in the past budgeted for something for the Creamore BIA, 
let's say that they say, okay, we're going to budget $10,000 for such and such an event for the BIA, and the actual co cost comes in at $8,000, then they take the extra $2,000 and they put it into the reserve fund. And there's all, there's uh, like, I don't know, there's got to be 30 or 40 reserve funds that the township has. Some of them have a lot of money. Others don't have much money. I mean, yours doesn't have much money, but we have a tax stabilization fund with a half a million dollars in it. So, you know, so uh, this, and according to Kelly, it says that as, as far as she's concerned, the distribution, um, it, she would suggest it can be used for any BIA uh, projects that, that you want. So I, I I think that uh, because it's been sitting there, no one's really paid attention to it for at least six years. Did anybody know it was there? 16 years, possibly <laughs> 16 years. I, I'm thinking that tomorrow at tomorrow's budget meeting, I just ask that that money be turned over to the BIA for your storage. You know, if you want to use it to, to rent storage units for the next five years or whatever, I'm not sure how much storage units are. Or... And, and then you still have the you still have the uh, the Santa float to put in storage. You can still do your own thing for the Santa float. You know, conversely, I can go to the township and I can say, look, you know, like, can we do one Santa float for all the municipalities for all the settlement areas in in the in the township? Or I can maybe do them both. I can ask for both. You know, at the budget meeting tomorrow. So. Uh, I just don't want to them to say, well, hold a second. If we if we take on the 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 uh, if the council takes on the responsibility for a Santa float, we don't want. I don't want them to turn around and say, well, we don't want to give that money to the to the BIA all in one lump sum. Uh, you know, it's yours regardless to do with it what what's necessary. But uh, you know, it's okay. So you guys so, does this not solve? Does this not solve our problem? Yeah. Yes, it does. Yep. So there's a bit of an update. I don't know, Sarah, if you want me to explain the update or? Yep, go ahead, Lori. So yeah. since, since yesterday, um, I guess Darcy did some, some work for us um, based on the Santa float and went out to um, Stuart Lazier who helped us uh, potentially secure a storage barn um just just in the last hour i just read an email that says potentially there's a couple that uh that i know that are interested in possibly storing the santa santa sleigh and the reindeer for the winter so i can follow up on that but the good news about the reserve fund is we still need to probably pay mr harper for it if if that is indeed still the case so that fund that doug has uh, uncovered could help us pay for the cost of the sleigh and the and the reindeer as well. Which was not budgeted for. Which was not budgeted for. So it's kind of like found. And certainly I think that's a good use for it. And that we pay Mr. Harper for his uh, his his uh, work over the years that he's he's done all the mechanical work on this and that we find somebody that can store it for us. So we may have, I don't wanna give their name out here because they haven't, they've sort of sent me a preliminary email saying they'd like to discuss it. So it sounds like it's a possibility, but I don't know, um, I, I'm just not sure yet if, if it's 100%. So it does look potentially good. Woohoo! Nancy's muted, she's talking. <laughs> By the next BIA meeting in February, we should know whether it's in or not. Oh, I think, I think, yeah, I think there'll be movement on that in the next two weeks, but, um, but by the next BIA meeting, we may have to, to make a motion for the funds. So I think we should direct Doug. I think, I think Doug, this is amazing that you've done this sleuth work for us. I really appreciate it because you're right. You found $8,000. Well, that's, that's before my, that's before my cut. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got to be careful here because I'm being recorded. Very, I, I can't be yeah. funny. But, Sarah, yeah. Go ahead. Sarah and then Heather. Okay, in terms of the reserve fund, I'm wondering, Doug, what the what the thinking is that the main the municipality maintains that reserve fund rather than just having it in our accounts. That's my first question. Um, and also, is that maybe where they put HST money? Have they changed their process because we have not received an HST check? So I'm also wondering if that's something that they're doing is is putting that into reserve. I don't know. So um, no, I, I, no, I would like I, to see all the money sit in, in our bank account. I, I think that that's the most appropriate place. Yeah. If it's our money, we should, yeah. we should have control over it. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Now, just to be, uh, um, well, let me have a look here. Uh, to, just to be clear, though, I, I, I mean, they, the, the township may say, well, no, that's technically not your money because it's, uh, it's money that the township had budgeted that was not spent. So it got put into a reserve fund. And the intention is that it's to be used for more BIA projects. So that's not your money. Uh, on the other hand, I think that tomorrow, because that money has been sitting there and it seems to have been forgotten, it is, uh, that's, that's my take on the situation. It seems to have been forgotten. So I'm thinking that we could probably get it either you know, into your account or a good portion of it anyway into your account. Or even maybe, uh, yeah, in order to pay for this storage and uh, to clean up this mess with the Santa fund or the Santa float that's been going on for eight months. So, yeah. you know, I may get, so basically to answer your question, Sarah, I may get some pushback on it tomorrow, but we'll see, you know. Well, I'm, I'm, also, I'm also, very, I, I need to be touching base with the treasurer anyway. So I'd like to just understand that reserve fund and how it works. Right. Because, I mean, often we do a lot of fundraising and stuff. And if we know that we could be alleviated of this because the municipality puts aside money and we're not accessing it, then we should be aware of that. Uh, I also think John Shore, who uh, was the treasurer before me, was easily one of the most mm -hmm. diligent humans I've ever met. And he certainly yeah. didn't mention this reserve fund. So I guess the knowledge of this is, is basically not within our organization. So we, we definitely need to make sure that that gets on the books. 2004 is 16, 17 years ago. So it predates a lot of us ever working yeah. on BIA, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so and, and now just to be clear, ladies, I mean, I was uh, doing this, I was dealing uh, with this just this afternoon uh, with uh, Kelly McDonald. So to, to give her, you know, like time. I mean, she uh, overnight she may look at it and she might find, well, no, that 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 reserve fund is not suitable, or or it's not, or we can't turn it over to you. I may get that response tomorrow morning because uh, I told her I would talk to her before the budget meeting tomorrow. But uh, definitely, uh, uh, you know, I, I'll 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 ask for the money anyway on your behalf. And, and thank you, uh, thank you. So, Thanks very much, Doug. Yeah. That's some great work. Really great. And once once we have a home for Santa's sleigh, we have the logistics to get it in and out and delivered and moved and that is what that is what we're working on. So I need to talk to this couple tomorrow and find out about the access to their barn. But uh, that's certainly going to be part of our discussion. It's like then, deep in snow or mud and then any truck will stop. Right. Yes. We'll have to we've into, done that. <laughs> I don't know exactly. So we'll work we'll look into all of that stuff. And then um and then if we have to rent a trailer for one day for the um, Santa Claus parade or something to put the float on, we can do that. But at least, uh, okay, we actually did something on this, guys. It's been only uh, not eight or nine months. I really appreciate everyone coming together and putting their heads together on this because I feel like we've been along a little bit. So, okay, I'm going to check with these people. Doug's going to check with uh, Kelly McDonald on, the, um, on this reserve fund that's sitting there. And Sarah's going to also check in with Kelly or Emmy, your, your contact as well in accounting. Great. Okay. We're going to move on from that? Sure. Okay. Hi, Oda. I think you popped in. <laughs> Welcome. Yeah. Hey, I've been here the, the whole time, actually, but uh, I wasn't on the screen. So. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Awesome. Um, I don't think, Oda, you've been officially confirmed as a board member just yet. I know you've expressed an interest, and I know there's a possibility that you've sent in your application, is that correct? Yes, yeah, I still work on it, yeah. <laughs> okay, so just, just for so your I'm own... I'm just going to have to that. Just for your own sake, because uh, of the administration and the sort of municipality act that we sort of follow into, um, all it means is that I don't believe that you... You're welcome to express your opinions, but it just means that you can't vote tonight on any of the motions. So um, just to make it clear for everyone, just in case. I don't want to be rude, but that's yep. just how it is. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on to 5.2, which is payment options. And Jen is trying to desperately get into. She's had some issues, and she's been emailing me, and she's been sitting here waiting, and she's not had an invite, I think, and Kayla said she I forwarded the email. Yeah, I don't know if she's got some issues. Bear with me a sec. I'm just going to double check and see if she's email. I 
make sure everybody who wants to be here is here. Um, okay, so, okay, let me just respond to her. So the email's from Clearview Clerks, right? Yes. Okay, she's looking, okay, she's looking for Kayla's email. Okay, so I'll send that, okay. Great. Thanks everyone for doing that. Um, hopefully she comes in, in the next few minutes. Okay, so payment options, POS for BIA. Oh gosh, sorry, I don't remember much about what this was for. I have so, not done anything on that. That was because we were talking about um, we were talking about the possibility of doing BIA gift certificates, but we ran we ran up against the yeah. the. Um, the problem of collecting funds. So I will put that on my yeah, list. Yeah, it's a meeting with the funds. Yeah. all kinds of things to do. So, yeah. PO. so that'll just be a finance department meeting for Sarah with uh, yeah. Clearview Township, yeah. right? Perfect. Well, let's move on. Um, billboards. Oh, sorry, Sarah. That's it. Okay. Um, billboards. Heather, do you have any updates on billboards? Um, I don't have any updates uh, because I have had zero luck in getting in contact with um, Cindy Gordon. Um, okay. Now has been away and I haven't been able to reach via um, phone. And so my next, what I had to do the first time and I didn't want to is I had to go knocking on the door to get her in the mm -hmm. store. So um, I'm still on it um, and I just got to keep on calling. Okay. so. It's top of my list because I so I have the executives at Creamer after me to change our logo. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, so I have lots of fire under my pants from a couple sides. So I'm trying. If that comes up before our next meeting, can you pull some of us in if you need us in terms of billboards or if we're gonna participate or if we can, you know, do anything to help you or support you? Just let yeah. us know. I definitely will be in contact as I think that everybody wants to have a little bit of a fresher look yep. for that spot and if we can get some dollars behind it just to update those pieces with some fresh artwork then that would be i think everybody would be happy with that so this is the self i need to update mine there too right next to it so we do need to update those billboards. I think we actually need to take a lot of them down and, and rework them because they don't look good and some of the businesses don't really exist anymore. I don't know if Mad Noisy Gallery is still out there. We just got to convince the owners that, right? Yes. Yeah, so we really can't do much until, until you uh, speak to Cindy and then we'll, and then we'll decide what, what can be done and, and if there's an opportunity for the BIA to put something there. Or if, if you need uh, she, might, she might also be a good person for a storage, by the way. Yes. If you're looking for because the quant and the other building there, I, it's not going anywhere. So. Okay. I just saw her, today, but uh, so she's in town. I mean, so. uh, okay, there you go, Heather. I'll call the store again in the morning. Okay, perfect. Oh, Do she's not in the store at all. She's she, oh, yeah. Do you want maybe, her maybe not on this on, on this room, but if you could text or, or get together with Heather afterwards and provide a phone number. Okay, well, I'll text it to you, Lori, and then uh, yeah, you share it. Uh, I'll be able to share it. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm going to move on from billboards if that's okay. I'm going to talk to Nancy now with Street Decor Update. Nancy can give us an update. Sorry. Um, you mute? No, you're good. Uh, hmm. Well, everybody knows that the planters got taken off. It's been a pretty fun Street Decor <laughs> December. <laughs> it was a fun December for Street Decor. Yes. December so the, the, the plan just got taken off the street because Mara didn't realize that we were going to use them for the winter and then couldn't remove the snow and it'd be uh, library which is great um, and uh, I still haven't gone back and taken the buffalo plaid off in the stars I keep forgetting but I will done this week um, and then Sarah's been talking to um, rural roots so to move on with our spring and summer and fall uh, planting. So I think she'd be the better person to give us an idea of what's going to happen with that. Oh no! <laughs> but um, she's a local girl just up on Airport Road and I've always heard great things about her. I don't know her personally, but they can actually, um, I think we're going to talk to her sometime this month, were we not? Yeah, we'll have to catch up with Heidi. She was going to be really active in terms of housing and taking yeah. the the 
urns and everything, but because of the location, things are a little different than we first expected, but she's definitely aimed to help us uh, come up with a strategy to manage these huge urns in a way that meets our budget. Okay. Um, so I really don't have anything else to say other than we're just kind of in limbo for the next year. Thanks, Nancy. And and you're happy to continue um, chairing our Street yes. Decor yes. for 2021. Yeah, I just, I just, my, my, my downfall is that I don't like to ask for help. I'm really bad that way. So I've got to, I've got to be better at that. And I promise this year I will be asking for more help in terms of the physical getting out there, getting stuff done, because I just, that's where I fall, fall short. You're the one that's suffering, lady. I think that's, that's the case across the board is that we need to build a better volunteer base so that people can volunteer. And, and some of the businesses too, some of the people that own businesses can come and help yeah. a couple of hours every few months to, yeah. to help with plants yeah. or plant. Well, it was plant. great. Actually, once I put it out there, it said like, I just need help doing this. And it's like a whole bunch of people showed up and it was wonderful and they all yeah. really enjoyed it. And even yeah. people who come into the cafe, it's like I asked them because they're always looking for something to do. So I, I just need to do it more. So I'm not as frustrated. Yeah. Sarah, would you like, I know you expressed an interest because you're really uh, knowledgeable about plants and things. Would you like to join the decor committee or is that something? No, you I would would, be I, I'm i very interested in helping with the planters. I would be happy to do that with Nancy as the lead. That's <laughs> right. And, 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 and in terms of street decor, I'd be really happy. Could you happy get that in a minute? Nancy as the yeah. lead. <laughs> Nancy, I'd be really happy to help with the street decor, but instead of the planters so much, is I would really like to take one more shot, one more shot at the Christmas lights. <laughs> we're gonna, you know what, Lori, we're not going to give up on the lights. I don't care how many times we get bashed in the head, we are not giving up on the lights. The I don't know if I'm just, it's a definition of insanity that I just keep going after the same thing, but yeah, I think we still want Christmas lights, and so I just can't give up the dream just yet. So. I'd be happy to take on one more time Christmas lights. And after that, I'm probably out if it doesn't work. <laughs> well, the street looks pretty good when we have all our, our storefronts all lit up and it looks okay. It's nice. Yeah. It is what it is. Okay. Yeah. So, okay, great. Um, so we're working on the spring, summer, and fall. We'll get a budget together and there's some ideas. And Laurie was um, earlier saying there's some people that have come out of the woodwork and said they'd like to help out. So, and be great more the merrier and i think it's also a nice idea to extend some help from the horticultural society as well because i know that they were really keen in the spring because they're not well they might be very busy this spring replanting some of the plants into the um the the village green but they might be also very keen to help us out if there's planting that has to be done or maintenance I know. so you tap on their shoulder too for volunteers yeah i guess my 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 uh ball and asking for help so i will be more active in that <laughs> okay fair enough all right welcome jen um sorry there was a bit of a hiccup there getting you in Hi, guys. Now. sorry about that number i had a, a whole email I, uh -oh. I saw that the agenda and the minutes were there and i'm like oh yeah whatever i'll get to it when i get to it and then i went to sign in and i didn't have a login so i apologize no worries well, no worries um well you're here now i'm so helping with right. school project that's Back and forth. Usual. I love it. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move on to events. I like this is sort of an odd sort of thing to talk about now. Yes. I think the way I'd like to frame the events conversation is that we're moving into 2021 and we're gonna have to start doing programming and planning. Um, we have to work towards an AGM. I can't remember if we set a date in our last meeting, but um, we should look not the minutes to the month of February to try to put together some sort of a virtual AGM. And in saying that, I know I've talked to Heather and Sarah and Nancy and some of you guys offline this week about what can we do? Should we plan events? Shouldn't we? I know we're all not really sure about what the final answer is, but I think every, all of us have kind of come to the conclusion and talking to you all that we start to put together some straw framework for events. We start to sort of think if things work out, if in time, if we're able to do something or to think about with a plan B in mind, knowing that very likely we may not be able to do anything, but maybe we have a scaled down version where it's build a core or I don't know, something, you know, scaled down in terms of the village, but we don't just take everything off the table immediately. I know Heather mentioned that tourists more, you're still working to figure yeah, out. Uh, yes. More um, in and the spring. it's working very closely with Simcoe Muskoka Health. 
Um, one thing that's different with Turas, a, a sporting event such as Turas More versus a community event is that you can control the numbers with registration. And so we can do it over three days and say there's between 9 a.m. and 4 p.m., 100 people max each day. Doing a public event and it's advertised, there's no control on numbers. That's sort of where that difference lies. Um, and following closely only with the guidelines of simple Muskoka Health. Obviously, um, my problem is, is planning. We would start our planning um, end of November, early December for Terrasmore in May. And not knowing the state, especially after today, we get a delay of 28 more days. Um, and so we may move it for May. We don't want to lose anything behind this event. So those are all the things that we're dealing with um, on the, the topic of Terrasmore. Okay. Um, thanks. That's interesting. And um, I think I, talking, Sarah and I were talking earlier about um, Creamore Nights mm -hmm. and potential and the sort of um, a little bit of uh, momentum we started to get going in 2019 on Creamore Nights and whether, um, you know, it's, it, we, it bears out having maybe an offsite virtual conversation between some of us about what can be done and starting to put some sort of ideas together. Um, Sarah said, and I don't want to put words in your mouth here, Sarah, but you mentioned that you might be interested in sort of helping lead some of the Cremor Nights um, discussion. Um, I don't know if I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> no, I, I, I would be happy to look at um, creating an overview of possible events for 2021, knowing that we have some that we were able to make work in the context of this year, so those would be definite, and then we could uh, think about other things as well. But it, it is hard to plan, but remembering that with the Creamore Nights Festival or events last time, we started in May. Yeah. And it wasn't ideal. We were able to roll it out very quickly. Heather, did you have a comment? Um, I have a comment that um, I know that we pulled out of our Festivals and Events Ontario membership, but they have a month of February of a whole bunch of um, talks and stuff. And there is, I'm trying to pull the, I didn't do it prior to this meeting, my mistake. I'm trying to pull the non-member um, uh, registration fee, and it's all online stuff. And if, I feel like it was like $75 and you could have four people or something. Um, it's very reasonable. I'm just trying to, but it might be, um, if we have that available, it might be worth the, the minimal investment that people could join in at any time based on what's offered. And lots of the discussion will be on people planning during this pandemic and looking towards the summer and stuff like that. So um, I'm going to pull the uh registration fees it's probably it's on fio.com and it just it, if there's any interest on our end and that just might help with some direction and some ideas and listening to what the other towns and villages are doing mm -hmm. yes. yeah, there, are you going to be attending yes i don't know what days i'll be attending but um i honestly am on the board <laughs> and um, apparently i'm still the um conference chair but i actually have no idea what's going on no, that's, been that's, that's okay. <laughs> to pay attention. So yeah, it's all on. It's all online. It's for the month of February. So you can there's there's the like Tuesday talks and there's different things in it. So um, to one fee for a number of people. Would, would so anybody here be that. interested in that sort of um, FEO? FEO is Festival and Events Ontario. If if you're not familiar. And we used to have a membership, it's an association uh, that Heather is a board member of and also chairs the, the um, conference every year. And uh, it's a really worthwhile organization, actually. Um, we, I think we just felt that having a membership at this time wasn't really advantageous because we're, we're lucky enough to have Heather sitting on our board and able to get a lot of the information through you. Um, but if anybody's interested, is anyone here think they might be interested or you can get back to me afterwards? Sarah's maybe not. Nancy, Jen, no. what a... So you know what, Heather, the, the best thing might be is if um, keep us up to date about what's going on, what what the planning is. You know, if we can pop into one, we will. 
time sort of on you. you know, yeah, there. and I um, work closely with lots of other municipalities and um, people in small communities. So I got my ear to the ground and listening to what everybody else is doing. Yeah, and Heather, I think last year, I mean, before things kind of went off the rails, I think you were really very much our events chair in a way where you sort of oversaw and, and looked at sort of the planning overall of events and this sorts of things about what we can do. Would you be interested in kind of fulfilling that role again? Yeah, I'm and happy to continue to yeah, find out all that's, that information. That's what I'm thinking sure. is you can maybe provide us with a bit of an update on what other towns are doing and what uh, FIO is recommending. In terms of planning summer. Sure. And I'll take anything. In, because yeah. um, I, yeah, I, I do collect information yeah. as I get. Yeah, I so. mean, it's super important for us to learn about what other, like what can be done, what other towns are doing, what are the parameters. So if you are, are comfortable in sort of giving us a bit of an update once you learn more, that would be great. Well, I'll for sure have details, um, an additional update for um, the event section for the February meeting. So happy to provide whatever I know moving forward for um, our scheduled meetings. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, anything else you guys want to talk about in events? Um, should we put together a, should we have an, a work, work, uh, workshopping kind of meeting um, to talk about events specifically? It, offline, uh, sort of online, but not in this forum, I mean. Um, would anybody be interested in that? Just, uh, is it too early? Heather, sorry, Sarah, Sarah Nancy, I'm seeing Oda. <laughs> I'm just looking at hands quickly. I don't yeah. think it's too early. No, it's not too early at all. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> you don't like it. Okay, so um, Sarah, I can send out a meeting request. Yes, that'd be great. Heather, Oda, um, and we'll just sort of start talking about what can be done. And like you said, we'll get some information from FIO and, and we'll just start putting some dates and some crossing our fingers to see maybe what we can do this year. Um, and does this time work for everybody for a meeting time, seven o'clock or daytime? Or? Okay. Yeah, for me, that's good. Sure. <laughs> I'm assuming for restaurants, it's better earlier in the week. Yeah, Monday, yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday. Okay. Um, okay, great. So, anybody else have any more comments on events for this year? It's such a weird thing. It's usually our biggest, uh, our biggest agenda item. Yeah. Well, I think we're still going to have to have events. They're just going to be different. So we, we really need to put some time into it. Yeah, we have to be creative for sure. Um, Marking, so I'm you know? still told that gathering, we shouldn't expect to have large gatherings, e cover, yeah. um, until like maybe fall of 2021. I'm getting married in July, so I mean, there's going to be large gatherings. You're, you're getting married? Is that what you said? Yes. Oh, yeah. Um, well, your backyard is different than a community, I think. Um, um, what was I saying? So large gatherings. Oh yeah. So I don't think that negates maybe like shopping promotions. It's just that maybe our vintage fest or um, cream or nights may look different or change. So obviously we just got to, it's, we can only go, we can only think as fast as um, our government is advising and our local health boards. Uh, so we have to watch that closely, but doesn't mean that we can't stop thinking about it and brainstorming um, new ideas of what we can do, or if we have to pivot, what can we do? Yep, agree. Uh, Project sales up in the sky while people lay on their backyard, in their backyards and see <laughs> advertising fly by or something, I don't know. <laughs> A hot air balloon festival. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Okay. Um, public participation. I haven't had any um, emails or anything to this extent that anyone has asked me to read out. Has anyone else got any public participation? <laughs> okay, we're going to skip through that. Okay, here's the fun part. Now we're going to get to the financial report from Sarah. Sarah, our treasurer. So thank you so much, Sarah. Do you need to share a screen or? Oh, she's on mute. You again? Oh, she goes. I can't hear you. Because she's on mute. Sorry, I'm just trying. I haven't actually uh, shared from my Google before. So just give me a sec here. Okay, no worries. Well, while we do it, we'll have a preamble. So Sarah has been working on trying to gather all our expenses for 2020 and just put them in a spreadsheet to sort of see how much money we spent. 
Um, generally every year our levy is about $20,000 and interestingly enough, we're pretty bang on in terms of spending. So, and then Sarah's going to also help drive the, um, the process of budgeting for the AGM and for 2021, if we can, I mean, again, it's, it's a pretty tricky thing to do, not really knowing what we're going to be doing. Um, Sarah, do you have any other, um, comments you want to make about the budget, the budgeting process? Um, Sorry, are, are you guys seeing? Sorry, I actually haven't had to do this before. No, me neither. We're seeing everything. You're seeing my entire Google thing. Yeah. Now, if I could only find the darn file, <laughs> you feel better. Ah. <laughs> so I have gone through and done all of last year's um, finances. And uh, what we spent, yeah, we just basically spent everything we had with the levy. So, um, just a sec, sorry. Okay, take your time. Okay, there we go. I was, I was in another entirely different uh, universe. Okay. It's coming up here. So here are my clever notes all figured out here. So what have I done? I have sent off information about uh, all of our spending and income to the municipality. So they will go through and make sure that all of our numbers are good. I've also shared it, I think, with Nancy, um, Jen, Lori, and Heather, so that they could also just review it and see if I've missed anything. Um, but in light of the fact that it hasn't been reviewed by the municipality, I've just kind of uh, ballparked it in terms of what we spent last year yeah. and then use those numbers to create a recommendation for what each committee could spend this year. So, um, as you can see, streetscape, which included garbage removal, rental of the bin, uh, staffing to remove uh, the garbage weekly, all of the decor, kind of our big, our big commitment to the community. Marketing, we spent six, which also included the um, creation of our new website and, um, ah, my internet is unstable. Anyway, uh, so the marketing was a little, uh, included some special things. Christmas uh, included both the Santa Claus parade, some giveaways and some uh, promotion around our shopping. And then admin included things like our um, mailbox checks for the year and uh, that sort of thing. So I'm basically recommending that each of the committees uh, go away with these numbers in mind and come up with a budget based on um, uh, what we spent last year uh, in those departments. So um, that would give us a zero based budget. And um, this budget looks very different than many other budgets. We usually have a lot more income uh, and a lot more expenditures based on events. Those are both sponsorships and user fees that those events create. Um, but I think in light of what's going on this year, what we should be doing is just kind of separating the event stuff out with the idea that um, events could be by reserve as well as uh, specially procured money through sponsorship and fees. So um, just so people know, we have quite a bit of money in the bank and thanks so much Doug for telling us that we have even more sitting in reserve up at the municipality. But um, when last I checked at the end of November, we had over $50,000 in the bank and um, we don't have any projects that um, are expected to be paid for from that money. It's not like in other years where we have lots of money, but yeah, we still haven't done the website and we still haven't put up a billboard, that sort of thing. That money is all, um, none of that's allocated. So in terms of the next steps for kind of pulling our finances and budget together, the next thing I'm going to ask is that each of the, the committees convene with kind of these numbers in mind um, and come back with what they think that they would like to do. If they can't do it within the, within the restraints of the money that is 
kind of getting us to zero, we can look um, as a board at extending the spending if we need to. And then we can also look at how we can make up any shortfalls um, if we want to. So um, in terms of the committees, um, I've just kept them to the marketing, streetscape and events because those seem to be quite um, active. So with the marketing committee, Lori, I didn't put any names next to these, but I certainly can. I sort of thought, Lori, you would be continuing as the marketing chair or subcommittee. Unless anybody else wants to take it on. <laughs> I'm happy to hear okay. that. And, and then, so I'll put names next to this if everybody is good with that. And then if, uh, oops, sorry, <laughs> I was in the wrong place at the wrong time. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, so Lori, so we'll have you kind of convening that and then Nancy, you said you would be convening Streetscape and then I, Heather, I don't know if you want to convene events or... Yeah, does that I think work? we've kind of decided. We decided yeah, that. that's what I thought too. Okay. And then, so if everybody can go away and kind of come back with what they can, they think they can do with the money or if they need more money let's talk about it because we certainly have money to spend if we need to or we can come up with ways of finding it um so once each of the committees has gone away and um figured out what they need please just send me the information i'll compile it in a nice little package and we can look at all of that in, at our next meeting if we want to, our February meeting, as Lori mentioned, could be our AGM. I could easily have that package um, created so that it would be presentable as an AGM package, provided everybody can get me the information um, a week in advance. Should, should hold on a sec. Uh, do we not have to meet to approve um, the budget for 2021 before we go to the AGM? Presented. I personally don't think that uh, we need a completed budget to go. I think a proposed budget for the membership is really effective. And then if they have comment, we can listen and we can make um, we can make changes if we need to. Has always been my preferred method. I mean, as we know, budgets change, especially in these times, yeah. <laughs> regularly. Right. I think if we want to get our budget passed quickly we could it doesn't really matter we can make either one work Lori I, I'm flexible if there you, if you're more comfortable doing it as a proposed budget I I'm fine with that I just wasn't sure what we've done in the past we've done it both ways the only reason I'm suggesting proposed budget is because you mentioned that you'd like to have our AGM in February so if we wanted to we could bring it forth as a proposal and then we could roll it into an AGM format would it be better to have the AGM in March, where we think by March, maybe we'll have more information about the pandemic? Does sure. Point. Point. Right now, we're throwing darts at the wall in terms of events and budgeting and stuff. We have no idea. Exactly. Um, yeah. It doesn't matter, Sarah. Uh, if we're it doesn't matter. I'm happy to do it as a proposal for the board or happy to do it as a as a proposal for the membership either way it doesn't matter to me particularly unless anybody has strong feelings about it no. but i do think it's important to ensure that the all of our members see it and that they have the ability to comment. um because i think reaching out we have a lot of members with a lot of really great ideas mm -hmm. and if we create space for them to provide input um, in February or March, it doesn't matter which way we do it, but by the end of March that we have a, a budget that puts us in a position where we can freely go forward in our committees spending uh, according to those budgets. Um, so that's kind of the process all laid out there. Once it's approved, we'll take it to council, la la la. So are there any questions or concerns about that? No, I think that's really thorough. Okay. Um, you, you didn't mention that you're going to have it audited, but I assume that's what you're talking to Emmy about and the finance uh, people. In the yeah. Center. So the process annually is that I'm responsible for sending all of the financial documents off to the municipality. 
Um, I've sent them all of the information, our kind of our ledger on Friday. Uh, I haven't heard back from them, but I'm assuming they just have a lot to do. I will follow up, but um, they have all of those that that and they will make sure that all of the money has been handled correctly so no concerns there that's for sure they do an excellent job now Lori and I have been talking and I'm just throwing this out there here as a bit of a topic of conversation which is maybe um, a bit of a directive from the board in terms of creating a process to look at our levy we've talked about this a few times because we recognize that going forward, our levy may not be sufficient to provide the kind of members expect, as well as kind of um, maintain service to the community that we've always provided just because of inflation. So I don't know if there is value or if we're ready to do this, but I was wondering if we wanted to start creating a process to do a levy review. What would that um, look like? I, I don't understand. So the, I don't know what it looks like, but what I would like is direction. If you guys are interested in a levy review, give me some direction so that I could create something to give you an idea of what it would look like because I don't want to put a lot of time into it only to have people say we don't want to look at it my guess is that what I would do is draft like a one I think it would take a significant um, amount of time just because you would need community engagement that sort of thing I think it would be probably a one-year process from start to finish where you would start at the AGM um, flying the idea past the membership and then you would present the final levies at the following year's AGM, and you would have to work with the municipality as they're the, the um, collections agency, basically, on that. I would, I would definitely need the municipality to help us formulate um, how money is collected, how we distribute the levy fairly. We would look to the OBIAA for best practices in terms of how they recommend levies, and also if we wanted to do something like put in a mandatory rate of increase um, and just build that in so that it isn't like something that we have to look at. I don't even know when the last time there has been a review of levy. So I don't understand actually what we're asking for. So we're getting a review of where the money comes from. What individuals yeah. so currently we get we collect twenty thousand dollars we collect it from our members we've been collecting it twenty thousand dollars through taxation or sorry the municipality collects it as part of their taxation process and then they dif disperse it to us so what I'm at, at, what I'm looking for is kind of the feel of the board if what we need to do is look at it and say do we need more than twenty thousand dollars and are we collecting this amount of money in a method that's fair to our members because currently I know that like we have a cap on the most amount that one single business can pay which is two thousand dollars and so we would just want to look at that a little bit more carefully we'd want to look at how how we how we decide who pays what probably as well and then what we what we need that final number to be and whether that number would increase annually so it's a bit of a process and the other thing that might we might look at within that process is if there are any would take people that are smarter than me, we would definitely need the BIAA and we would definitely need the cooperation of the municipality. And the, and the reason why we want to do this is because it hasn't looked at for years and years and years and it could be more money in there for us. Is that what well, is that we would do? Well, that we we might we will not have enough money to continue to provide the existing services that we currently do if yeah. we do not raise the levy. You can't, you know, it's it hasn't been raised. I don't even know how long it's been since it's been raised, and so I um I think it's a great idea. Then it's like yeah. But the other thing is, is that it's not going to be raised like. 50% or anything. I, I had a discussion with the OBIA president last year about it. And, and we talked about like 1%, 2%, you know, yeah. per year, maybe compounding it a bit, but, um, you is know, it, is it worth the actual effort to put into it or just, yes. is it, you is know it, what, if we had put it up 1% a year for the last 20 years, we'd be at maybe 30,000 by now, you know, even if we just did that. So, 
Sarah's right. We have a reserve. We could burn through that reserve in a year or two if we don't have sponsorship money and if we wanted to run this types of Cremor Nights and the types of events that the community is looking for um, and the members are looking for. We could burn through all that money maybe in two years. And then if we don't continue, this is sort of a long term so that we set ourselves up for, for the, next, the next boards in the future so they have more money. Because the flowers, I mean, what you bought flowers for in 1980 and what you buy flowers for today are just you know, <laughs> not comparable. It's not comparable. No. So, I mean, $20,000 in 1980 was a really good amount of money for them to do flowers and the wonderful right. thing I hear about, but that money just doesn't go very far these days with the, with the costs. Um, well, Sarah, you know, do you know who, uh, like you're going to have to work with, like who would take this on? So I would take it on with okay. the help of the municipality and probably Lori as the president. But what I could do is chart our path forward with this, similar to what we did when we did the constitutional review. And then I would bring it back to both the board and our membership, because the last thing I want is for the membership not to understand why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. And also, I mean, if there is not a will of the membership to increase, then they need to understand that there'd be a reduction in service or that there might be a greater demand for them from them to volunteer or provide resources yeah. you know on their own that sit outside the levy so I mean which is also a totally fair way for us to get other resources but it definitely helps the conversation in terms of what we want and how we're going to pay for it well we, we are well, one of, I think it's great we, we are one of the few BIAs that doesn't increase our levy with the cost of living or inflation every year um, yeah. most of the ones in Ontario do according to the OBIAA and we were one of, they couldn't believe what we do with the amount of money we have. <laughs> so well, we just request it gets, it gets upped from like, we want more money from the tax. Well, it's, it's a process where you can't just tax people more, I think, without going through an official review and a, and a process like Sarah's saying, and certainly during COVID, this is not the time we want to sort of add to people's taxes. But the fact is, it's going to take a year to go through the process and to make sure that everybody's on board and you know we'll probably have to have motions and they may be debated um amongst the bia and and then um like the town like sarah said with the township and stuff it, it has to go through them as well and make sure that they're they're approving it so it is a long lengthy process and i think certainly we don't want to introduce it during covid but now's the time to review it and to look at it and see if it's feasible so that next year next yeah. february well, things so are back. Just out of curiosity the people that the, their taxes part of their taxes are used are just the the basically the properties on the bia yes some some i think some tenants pay the levy i'm not quite sure but i think certain tenants do pay part of the levy themselves it's oh, assumed in terms of the way that it's assumed is if you are renting from a business in the bia you are paying an element of the levy that's part of what your rent is. And the taxes all come out of the BIA. It doesn't come from anywhere else. It only BIA. It, it does okay. not affect residential okay. uh, properties. Only, and honestly, like only within the BIA. So currently, um, Creamer Pizza Co. and the Laundromat and even uh, Susan Eastwood, they are not part of the BIA. Okay. So there's an opportunity there too if we wanted to... Um, look at the boundaries that that is something else that can happen. but i mean i not very many people want to come into the boundaries usually because it means an increase to their taxes oh, did, did you have a question i had saw your hand up no i was just i was just wondering why doesn't the uh, the township or the uh, the government include if they're you know they're raising a uh, property taxes which it's actually part of that goes to the levy shouldn't it be done on the same scale as what they are raising it up yeah, you'd think. <laughs> That's a really good recommendation. That's certainly something we can look at, but we also have to remember that um, our members are also the people paying the taxes. So it's kind of like we have to find this perfect balance between how much are we paying for taxes, how much service is the BIA providing. So I think that's what the process will address. And Ota, to your point, maybe we will decide, okay, well, whatever the municipality wants to do, we're going to do something similar, minus 1%. Who knows? We, that, but that is one way we can look at it, for sure. And that's where I'm going to be looking to the experts at the municipality to help us, because I do not understand how that works. 
Okay, so that um, so if I may, um, I'll take direction from the from the um, the board to get going on looking at this. And Lauren, I'm hoping you'll work with me because you have already done significant yep. work with BIA, OBIA on that. Okay. Um, so then let's officially kick it off with the idea that we'll report back next year with or next meeting with a bit of an overview, a schedule of what um, what kind of um, things we have to look at and how we're going to communicate with the membership on that. Do you want a formal motion then, Sarah, uh, to direct you to investigate the levy review? I think so. Have we passed this motion before? Do I keep asking about doing this no. but never do anything? With no. Okay. No, <laughs> not that I, I can recall. I thought about it I was like, dang it, we need to get it so that it, we talk about this more than we talk about the stupid Santa Claus parade. Yes. Well, if I put it in the minutes, then Kayla's going to bring it up every single time until we find a solution. <laughs> every time. Yeah. Okay. So, yes, I would like to bring forward a motion. Um, and the motion would read something like the BIA directs Sarah Hershoff to um, create a possible, a possible process for the review of the board at our next meeting. So all I'm going to do is come back and I'm going to say, this is how I think it could go. And then we can discuss it again. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. And we did have a framework for the constitution. It worked super well. Um, and I think I would do something similar to that. So, okay. Um, my yeah. last thing. Yeah, I, I do have the motion. I've got oh, that Sarah's uh, gone ahead and put that motion forward. So I just need a seconder. Do we have a seconder? Nancy's going to second it. All in favor? Uh, Jen, I didn't see you vote. Are you in favor? Yep. Doug, yep. Okay. So motion is carried. Thanks everyone. Okay, so that's great. So we'll start, we'll kick off the process and um, I think it's gonna be a good review. In, in talking about the constitution actually, last year, um, Pam Fettis and Kayla both did um, a whole review of the constitution as well and had some um, suggestions for that. Should we add that into this or is that just too convoluted to add the constitution into this committee as well? I too much? Too much, <laughs> too much too soon. Okay. okay. Now, the one other thing I just wanted to share, um, this is a report that I brought forward in 2016, but I just like to kind of bring it out every January just to make sure that everybody is reminded about um, all, all of the expectations for us when it comes to spending um, as members of the board and committees. Um, so it just gives you kind of an outline of what our responsibilities are, what money can we spend, and in the event uh, if there is overspending or projected overspending, how to deal with that, which is to come to the board and get, um, you know, get approval, the board's approval. So this I'll just send around, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody was aware of this, especially Jen, you're, you're back on the board. I'm sure none of this is new to you, but it's always nice to review it. Um, and it also gives some basic information to um, event organizers about the best ways to manage payouts and gathering of expenses. So, um, this will be, I'll send this to Kayla so it's in the minutes again. Um, if you have any concerns about it or we need to adjust this, again, this is just kind of like an overview for everybody, but we can add more information if people think that there's anything that's missed here or anything that would have been helpful to them as they've gone through being on the board the last few mm -hmm. years. But um, it, yeah, so just talking about how you know, basically we can't spend money unless it's part of an approved budget. Um, and if you do need to spend more money, just come to the board so that we're aware of it and we're able to help out there. So that's just for everybody's information. And with that, I think I am done my report. Hey, Sarah. Hey, does anybody have any questions for Sarah before we move on? Sorry, I can't see your hands. Okay, you're all good. Okay, um, great. So I'm gonna move on to number 10, which is marketing. 
Um, so me to provide a marketing update. Um, what we have been doing is we're still continuing with our Instagram program where Joey is doing a fantastic job of um, monitoring our site and creating content. Um, we're just still humming along on that and we're still seeing a really good traction. We've more than tripled our, um, our followers in uh, the last eight months, which is great. And our engagements are up 300%. So we're pretty happy with um, <laughs> Metric. It didn't start off with much, so no, I <laughs> say we have three followers now. <laughs> I know. So it, you know, it started about, when we took over, it was about five hundred. Now it's about eighteen hundred. So well, that's I mean, really good. You're almost at as many as the brewery. Really? So <laughs> we only have five thousand. <laughs> I, I doubt it. So I think um, what I want to do is put together a marketing report for the ABM and just a review of what we've done this year in terms of the website. Um, the Instagram, the social media, and then marketing can also provide support for the events. Um, but in saying that, in the marketing committee, if, if it's kind of just me at the moment, so if anybody else would like to be member of the marketing committee, Oda, I see your hand. Yep, I'd love for you yep. to be part of the committee. <laughs> Anyone's just scratching their head at this moment. I think I might be taking you on the committee. Um, it's a whole lot of work, but I would appreciate any... Um, fresh ideas and, and stuff because we do, we do have some money to spend in marketing, but it's been a real fine line this year in terms of, um, of enticing people into the village and inviting people into the village when we're not supposed to have people traveling. It's been, it's been a really hard year to navigate through the marketing. So we haven't done a whole lot just in respect for our community and not, you know, doing a lot of uh, hooting and hollering about getting people to come into town, but still trying to support our businesses. So it's, it's been a bit of a challenge. And in terms of marketing too, I just wanted to find out if anybody in this group is interested in doing anything for Valentine's Day, which is coming up obviously uh, in a month from now. I don't know if there's an appetite for it. I don't know if there's something we can do, um, specials. I think we'll be still closed by then, so. Yeah. We will be closed. We will be definitely closed, but I don't know if there's something. Love I mean, some I, cream I, more. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, what I'm planning, I guess, it's uh, to do something as the, uh, being done at the new farm, I guess the, uh, you know, you pick up or deliver your basket and then I'm just going to do some kind of a online food preparation for the couples, but maybe that can be somehow translated to the, to the whole street. I mean, maybe all the restaurant or businesses could take part of this, you know, you pick up this giant basket and there are certain things, you know, let's say from the, from the pharmacy, you know, let's say there is a skincare product and maybe somebody can tell them about that. You know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, it's the, just something interactive because that's the only option we have without them being bored. So maybe invite some kind of uh, uh, performers. You know, I, I watched a Kiss concert on New Year's Eve because it was, I watched it live 20 years ago on New Year's Eve, but, but it was, you know, something that, you know, bring, something that brings people in, like bring some kind of interesting people. People are gonna be home. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and you know, on a New Year's Eve, for example, like my, my meal was that, that you take it and you just eat it. But on Valentine's Day, I think it's, there's more interaction between people and they, they want to, you know, have more, more fun to do something. So maybe, you know. Maybe there's something collaborative. It, it might be a little bit tight. But for that, but. Sorry, I missed the end of what you said, Oda. There might be. No, it, it, it might be a little bit uh, really tight on time right now. Maybe we are too far in the game to create something like that. But maybe this kind of thing could be done for Mother's Day, perhaps. I don't know. Okay. Yeah, I like I like the thinking there. I think I like the thinking of doing something virtual and collaborative. And you know, if there's something we can do for Valentine's Day, even if it's just um, you know, I don't know something in the Echo that you know stores can maybe put together a Valentine's Day special or a Valentine's Day gift. You know, you know, even even perhaps being uh, you know to more to be advertising for all the businesses that you know. Let's say everybody has a thirty seconds, and then. Jen will walk them through that and it's like, you know, this is order online for this is specific what we picked for the Valentine's Day and this is available. Mm -hmm. You know, it just lets everybody have a 20 seconds each business kind of, kind of, kind of fun collaboration with music and something, you know, I don't know. I think these, these ideas are great. They're just a little bit tricky in terms of logistics. Sarah, did you have a point? I really like the idea what Ota says about like the individual business owners. And I think what we could all do is if every business owner would in their shop, just say what they love about the village. And then we could use it as Instagram or what we love, 
or what we miss or something like that. And then we could take that. We, we should send love letters to our community. Maybe could be like our theme for marketing. And, uh, I, I love the idea of like I putting together that new farm thing wasn't actually that hard. Um, <laughs> was it Heather? <laughs> Once we figured yeah. out what the hell we were doing, which took I mean, a while. <laughs> yeah. Just like actually putting it physically together was the tricky part. Yeah. But if <laughs> but the no, it wasn't was tricky, it was just tedious and tiring at five in the morning. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Heather was hands on on that. But I do think that there is an opportunity there. Once you have the idea, it works. Yeah, I like the idea of a hashtag that's like love, um, love local Cremor or love love Cremor or something like that. And I like the idea of writing love letters to your community. Is that something that would be like published in the Echo or would we publish it just online somehow? Well, we would. Oh, I mean, local I'm declaring a pecuniary interest and putting on my Echo hat, but obviously the Cremor Echo is always happy to uh, work with the BIA to make it so that the community knows how much um they are appreciated and hopefully comes and spends money at our shop lovely i love that idea with that nancy i love that idea of love letters love letters to the community yeah it's beautiful i like it yeah i'm just taking notes um okay so i can maybe put something together about that and maybe go out to members and see if they're interested in participating and um see if we can't put something together even if it's just a gesture about you know what you love about your community and it just it keeps the businesses in the spotlight it keeps people thinking and engaged and and back to the downtown thinking about the downtown thinking about all of our businesses and um it also includes sort of love you know which is the theme of valentine's day so i think that's, that's really thoughtful and then with every one of those love letters, what we can do is push people to the specials that each of the businesses has from there, but that we come out kind of leading with this kind of human piece, but finishing up with a, and now you can buy maybe. <laughs> <laughs> and then next year, next year, I want to go get in the Guinness Book of World's Records for the world's biggest Valentine. <laughs> I really do. I always have wanted to do this. I really, really want to do that. Where are you going to find storage for it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't Indeed. know if it's a thing. I don't even know if the Guinness Book of World Records has a world record for the world's biggest Valentine. For Valentine? I'm yeah, sure you can Google I, it. I, but <laughs> I, I should, that would be a good place to start. So but, let's, let's break the committee now. But <laughs> make it the biggest the, heart. Don't you think it would be awesome? The world's biggest Valentine, and then everybody could come and sign it. Jen, what do you think? Look we don't have enough people to sign like record <laughs> to sign it. <laughs> okay, that's enough for me. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll put something together for trying to get us something that we can do. Um, you know, with the community, try to get people to write a letter about how they love their community, and also point them back into the business if they have some sort of a special or something they'd like to promote. And um, and I'll I'll talk to the Echo about how we can how we can collaborate. And Oda, if you have ideas too, we can we can kind of put our heads together, sort of offline, if that's all right. Yep. For sure. Okay, great. thanks guys. I appreciate the the the, the ideas. Um, okay, the website is still. I haven't had a chance to go through it, but what we all need to do now is really start to look through it and provide any edits that you see that you want to make. Um, it's still preliminary, so there's still time to get them. And if there's businesses that are missing, we have to make sure that we get all their photographs in. Yeah, Nancy? Okay, so on the dying one, I just looked on it, there's none of us are on there. Am I supposed to send something to her? I don't think I got it. On the what one? On, on the dying, it says dining. So services are all there, but the dining in Cremor, none of us are on there. Is it because we haven't done it? Because I haven't sent her anything. Possibly. Okay, do I just send it to her directly or is there a link? Um, there's a link. Let me try to find it for you and send it out again. I'll, I'll find it. Don't worry about it. You don't have to do it now. I'm just making a note. Yeah, I know. I haven't even gone through everyone to see who's missing, but I know that there are some big gaps, um, in the website still. It's just sort of a structure, but at least it's a good structure to build upon. Um, okay. And also photographs. I don't know at this point, I don't know if Joey's going to be able to come into your businesses and do the photographs. I, I keep I the photographs. You might have to do your own. Yeah, just for that reason. Just okay, great. 
Um, I think that's all I have for marketing at this time. Um, until we really have a full slate of events or other stuff going on, there's not a ton of stuff we can do in marketing. We can't really invite people during a lockdown to come into Kramer. So um, they can follow yeah. our Instagram and, and it's wonderful. Keep some mm -hmm. active. They really like it. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, okay. So I'm going to leave the marketing section now and I'm going to move into new business, which is uh, number 11. And I'm going to start off with I've got three sections here. I've got uh, Nancy that wanted to, to speak and then I have ADM uh, just setting the date for that you want to set as the date? number two. So, right. Sure, we can do that first if we want to. So 11.1, .1, I'm going to call it the AGM. Do we want to move the AGM out into March so that we have a little bit more time to plan um, for those of you that need a bit more time? Yeah, I would. Be. We don't even know what the pandemic's going to do. It's like I know, it's really hard. So our second Tuesday in March. That would be March 9th. Good. Done. So Kayla, that would be a big general meeting, I suppose, right? Yeah. How do we do that virtually in AGM? Same it's way we're doing this. Okay, we just invite people into the call and they can all join? Yeah, you would just uh, give me a list of anyone that you'd like to invite or I can send you the actual membership. invitation and you can chimp, mail chimp or whatever right out to your membership if you'd like. Okay. Oh, okay. So let's set it um, for March 9th, if that works for you guys. Um, do we need to I'll dress up for that, Kayla? Sorry, you cut out. Do we need to make a motion? Oh, sorry. Do we need to make a motion for the date for the AGM? No, that's fine. As long as it's uh, there and documented and everyone's on board for that, it's that's okay. fine. We're going to tentatively put that down for March 9th. Do you want to keep the same time or are you looking to start it a little earlier because it is the AGM? Uh, I think the same time is fine yeah. unless anybody has any objection. A lot of people have kids and stuff and businesses to wrap up. So. Okay. Okay. That's okay. That's all I had to just clarify. So that's great. Um, Nancy, did you want to take it away or? Sure. Um, okay. So I got an email. I'll, I'll I'll try to condense it as much as I can. I got an email um, back in December, but I was too crazy in December. So I got a follow-up email from a girl from BC Hughes. Um, and from what I can gather, BC Hughes is an organization that um, puts together tourism packages. Um, their website looks really nice and it's really great. And she seemed really lovely. Um, and she said, you know, can you fill out this form? We've got an initiative together with the Simcoe County Tourism Board um, group or whatever. And we want to put together a package to bring um, motorcycle tourists into Simcoe County, at which my hair almost lit on fire. And because um, I'm wearing a bunch of hats here. I live in the town. Um, my neighbors live in the town. I'm on the BIA. I'm on the BIA board. I run a business in town. I really, really like the motorcycles that we have now. And I mean, they are really friggin' loud, um, but fortunately, um, they, they bring great business to our town, not all of our business, but it's part of our patchwork. And so I, I want to keep, I don't want to be known as the anti-motorcycle town. I don't know about what anybody else thinks. Um, but I did get myself my knickers in a knot to put it nicely because we're really having a problem at the BIA with the loud noise of the, of the motorcycles. It's not only are our businesses complaining, our, our customers are complaining, our residents are complaining. Um, it's getting, it seems every year it's getting, there's more and more and more coming because we're doing such a good job marketing our community. Um, but it's getting out of hand. And we're, and I, I was down on the one nice um, November day. Um, it was a weekend that was just crazy warm. And I counted 53 motorcycles on Sunday at like two, two o'clock in the afternoon. Hold on. No, no. Oh. We, got, we see them all the time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know. Um, so here's my, here's my concern. So I thought, Okay, so who authorized or who thought that this was a good idea to bring more motorcycles into Creamore? Um, Simcoe County, I could get it. There's lots more to Simcoe County than our little village. Um, so I reached out and I said, who? And so I was, um, she passed on the email to a gentleman called Brendan Matheson, who's at the Simcoe County board. He's in charge, I guess. And he said it was a part of a approved tourism, um, Simcoe County for further tourism into our county, which is great. But... I really feel strongly that this doesn't kind of align with our values of what we want in a BIA. 
we wanted to welcome all sorts of people into the into our business district but to bring more motorcycles into town i'm afraid that our community will lynch us on main to bring more because we're already we're, we're up to our, our eyeballs thoughts um we're already in the video for the motorcycle tourism which video they've already done some free stuff brennan matheson with um bc hughes has done what some video that? shots there was so i'm just so and it was a three more um, yes, it was at the brewery. So the brewery is one of the people that are um, well, part of the promotion. Um, obviously, I, I know now it didn't go obviously through the township. It, it went through the county. So we've been, um, we, we work with them for cycling too. Same person that um, Norma works with. I think they were at Norma's as well. Um, and just as I do, I did attend the BC Hughes presentation that um, Simcoe County hosted, and I do um, have the links to share the presentation with our board to show it. Doesn't make mean your um, opinions are going to change, but I did collect the um, videos to share so you can see their perspective on what they're advertising. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and on the, I'm only business; I'm not a resident, so the, um, to tell you that. Uh, Creamore Springs is a supporter of the um, motorcycle tourism um, for it. They do market to people with uh, lots of money, people who are driving Harleys. As we know, they do spend money in our town. So that's the part that I'm seeing, obviously. So, and we're working closely with um, the county. Um, but I just wanted to disclose of pass on the presentation from BC Hughes or very well done and um, well received um, with there was I can't there were so many people on this presentation from all over Simcoe County like in I'm just curious so, as to why nobody in the BI nobody was informed in Cremor other than just the brewery but none of I don't know I don't know, I, don't know um, I was included with a slew of emails that I didn't even see all of them so I'm not sure um, if it was sent and it was missed, I'm not sure. Well, um, it's a concern. And as a business, here's the thing. It's like, I talked to Carol at the pub and I know I, I was, we're hundred percent sure that you were definitely involved in, 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 in part of it because they do bring the but motorcycles do bring economic into town. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. But we have to, I, I believe we'd have to weigh it out because our community surrounding that actually live here that have to live with the, the noise going up and down and and, and I, I've talked to Tom about this the same thing he's like the backlash is going to be huge we are really and a lot of times um I, what I find concerning is that the decisions are made for tourism and I'm really they're everyone's looking out for the best at, the best for our communities to have lots of tourism and, and, and economic you know viability and blah 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 but this is the one thing that we're really getting a lot of backlash for. And, and I don't even want to think about what my neighbors would do to me if they found out I was on board. Is it with the this. same for skidoos during the winter? Not really. Hmm. I don't, not to nearly to think about the, 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 if you lived in, in town, you don't get skidoos going up and down the road like the morning. I'm just thinking of what I see outside of the pub, um, not this year excluded, but I've always seen in the winter time, it, our corner is always full of skidoos. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Um, I'm gonna go to Oda and sorry, I see both your hands. You know, I live on on Mill Street, and uh, my business is not necessarily benefiting as much as the others from the motorcycles, and and it and that's great. I, uh, however, I it does not bother me as a resident on Mill Street whatsoever. It may be on the patio, perhaps when people are there, but they chose to sit outside. And and on the other side is that what? So I know that you know, the residents will kind of give us a grief, but what if we just kind of manage where those bikes How are can you go? Manage? Let's say they're just available on, on, on a mill street. I'm not sure. And, and maybe there's only one parking lot. Like maybe it's at the brewery. Maybe it's at the, the there's no, the, they walk in the town, maybe, you know? I, I can just have to say no, no more. No, yeah. we don't want they, to there's a motorcycle that. parking, right? But the order, that's the thing, it's like, we don't want to say no motorcycles because that's not what we want to do. But of the course. concern is bringing, encouraging more to come into town. They're going to come anyway, and that's fine because yeah. I love them. Yeah. They're great. They're really loud, really 
of a lot of people. They don't smell like the skinny people, you know? Sorry? Sorry? Well, motorcycle people, it's like, you know, if the skidoo people come, the whole place smells like diesel. It's like, you know, the, the bikes are more expensive than cars. Like, it's like, I mean, it's, even for the environment, perhaps it's a, you know, you're better off to I have a bike than that. a skidoo. My, my son fills up with diesel, but I'm going to go to, I'm going to go to Sarah. I, I don't think that the question is if they have money or if they don't. I, mm -hmm. I, I think to Nancy's point, we have a commitment to our friends and neighbors first and foremost. And we know that there's existing complaints. They come through all the time. And for us to play an active role in the promotion of motorcycles is very different than welcoming people on motorcycles. So I, I really believe that we should continue to welcome people. As we've said so many times in this meeting, we welcome everybody to our community, no matter how they choose to get here, whether it's, you know, as long as it's lawful, you can come on a horse or a bike or on foot or in a car or on a motorcycle, whatever, just come. But to actively promote traveling by motorcycles, I think we would be going directly against our community stated values, which are like family friendly, walkable, uh, green, all of these things that we've said continually are part of our marketing and our uh, core values. And so as much as I want to include everybody, I just don't believe that we need to ask for specific business that we know will upset our friends and neighbors. Yeah. That's, that's what I think on this one. Jen, did you have any comments that you'd like to, to ch chime in here? Sorry, Jen, did you, did you have anything you'd like to add? Sorry, you, you cut out. I'm, hot. I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know. I'm divided on this. Like, it's really, it's a tough call. It definitely is. Like, I see both sides of it. Um, I don't think they spend a ton of money in my store. But at the same time, I know it's a scenic area, whether they come back another time with, you know, in the vehicle, spend mon more money in the town. I don't know. It gets a tough, it's a tough call to make. We have, they are loud. Loud. No, I get it. our location's a beautiful destination for people on motorcycle or vehicle. It's and I have friends that have been me on motorcycles, so. My, my, my concern from the BIA perspective is that, like Sarah said, if we are actively involved in promoting to bring more motorcycles into town, I'm really concerned. The BIA doesn't need to advertise or promote. Yeah, Nancy, what are they asking? They're asking me to like be when a, they when they, they called you. A destination. No, they put me in an email. They asked me to be a destination. Like, do I have a public bathroom? Am I going to be okay. motorcycle? I have the email I can share with you guys, too, if you want to take a look at it. We also have to remember the municipality has the, the ability to share the fact that we do have public washrooms at Station on the Green and put us there as a marker for the motorcycles too. They were part of it too. They were part of the project. Yeah. So I think if we have concern about the active, like actively marketing, <laughs> that we had better share them sooner rather than later. Um, because we, we know that we said that we were part of this part of actively promoting it we were we're gonna have a lot of explaining to do like who wants yeah, to say to someone, you know what i would sooner have uh you know all of these visitors on these motorcycles and have everybody you know unhappy with us that lives here all the time like i just i really struggle with finding the balance but for me my friends and neighbors come first and i know my friends and neighbors are not happy with those motorcycles Oda? I, I, I agree with sarah there it's a, I, I guess yes we are happy to welcome those who are coming here but we don't have to promote it as a i guess a bia because we don't want to look bad it's a it's a politics here kind of a little bit and we have to kind of you know play it low and uh, let others to promote it somewhere else. Yeah, maybe exclude yeah. us. Maybe exclude yeah, I think us. If, if, we're, if we're on their map, you know, that's one thing. We're, gonna we're not, them. as a business, the Creamer Springs one is not, they're, we're continuing being a partner. So I know it's not of the BIA, it's of the business. So I don't know if that's going to cause a problem. Yeah. Well, we'll just get them to call you, Heather. Every time they want to complain about noise, I'm going to tell them to call you directly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
That's emails better. I don't answer my phone. So, so it's if, so from what I'm hearing is it's you know there's two sides and everybody's on on a different side depending on where you sit. I know for myself, I get a lot of complaints about motorcycles from businesses and from some of the people on Mill Street that live here. I think Heather and my corner is a little bit worse and maybe. Um, we get, corner is heavy with the bikes. <laughs> you get very inundated. The noise is, is a lot to deal with. The diesel fumes are a lot to deal with in my store. And, um, you know, it can be kind of aggressive and uh, not everybody is, but it, it can be a very aggressive noise. And I know that I have some elderly neighbors that are quite upset to the point where they want to move because of the motorcycles and um, they live on Mill Street. And I know some of the other businesses have told me. And so I, I agree. I, I think the motorcycles are going to come anyway and we're happy to welcome them here. But um, I, I have to say that I don't want to actively promote it as well because I don't think it fits in with with what we're doing and, and what we stand for. So um, Heather, what you're saying is that regardless of how the position of the BIA feels on this, it's be asked, asked to be excluded. Um, I don't think so. I, well, that's to be determined. Um, we've already put in our time and um, participated. Like far, I don't know where we're at for advertising and stuff. So Clearview Township, I believe, is on board as well. Actually, Amanda told me that that it's not a done deal with Clearview Township. She said that not we've been listening to the we're look we're looking through it and we're going to be um you know looking for input from the voices like the BIA and from the, you know the care board and that kind of stuff. They're looking for input, but the Simple County is absolutely okay, so into it. But whether the the Clearview Township is stamping it, we're not sure. They're not sure yet. I mean, that could be just to. Yeah, so if it's not like we've participated in lots of the talks and the presentations with BC Hughes and some video part, I don't know where that stands right now. It's probably like part, part of their promotions. Um, so but, uh, if, obviously if it hasn't moved forward, but up until now we have been participating. Great. But, we should put together a no, that is, uh, about the noise issues with um, the four wheelers, I believe, and I didn't think it was specific to the traffic that we have with the destination uh, motorcycle. It can be bad on Saturdays. No, it is bad. Not can it is. Well, I've and I've noticed like I see it. I've seen it the last five years. I mean, we get hordes of people, but we also go out and take pictures of all how many bikes are out there, so we don't see the other part. We don't see the other side of it. I think if individual businesses do want to promote to a specific target, that that's the choice of the individual businesses. But we but as the BIA have kind of to take a higher approach and look at it from the perspective community wide. So, I mean, Heather, each business has to do what's right for them. But I just sitting here as a community organizer and advocate, I think it would be wise for us to send a letter to the municipality explicitly saying that we would prefer to to promote other um, wonderful things about this community and that if they wanna help us marketing, other areas would be preferred. And certainly we don't want explicit marketing to motorcycles. I think we could do that um, if, uh, if everybody agrees. I'm in. I, I would agree. Jen, are you agreeing? Yeah, and Oda, what, you wanna put a letter? Okay, all right. So, and Heather, you, you, I think you see, see where we're sitting, but of course you've, you've got a, a different uh, viewpoint being in the brewery. And I think Sarah's right. Everybody has to do what's right for their business. And yeah. certainly. And I, I do agree that if it's, I do um, align with the BIA that they should stand with their community and not directly promote within the BIA. Um, so if that's the vote, I agree with that. So Lori, I'd be happy to put together a letter um, for you to review and we can send it to both staff and council. Okay. Um, shall we send it to everybody in this uh, on the board as well? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. That would be a great next step. Doug, did, you didn't weigh in here. I didn't give you an opportunity. Are you? Um... No, I, I'm, 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 I think that's a good idea. Send a letter to staff and council, mainly staff, but yeah, copy it to council. And uh, I, I agree with uh, basically what you're saying uh, there is that uh, each individual business has to do what's right for them. But it's uh, the, the BIA as a whole. Yeah, you should you shouldn't be involved with them, uh, you know, in promoting the motorcycles. I mean, I don't live in Cremor. I live out here in the country and on a weekend, 
you know, it's, it's noisy when they're going by and, uh, and like there's, there's hundreds that go by my place. So they're going nice to come weekend. regardless of it's I, being advertised or not. They've been coming always. Right. So well, that's, it, yeah, that's, it, true. that's true. And I just sort of suck it up. I mean, I think, well, okay, it is what it is. You know, I, I don't go out there shaking my fist or anything, but I definitely notice the noise. So I can imagine what it would be like in, in three more, a little bit more okay. congested there. So anyway, I agree with what you're doing. So. Okay. Yeah, and Heather, they are going to come in. And again, I'm not going to, I'm not an anti-bike person and I don't hear the noise. It's like, Oda, it, it's, it's only when you're standing outside and they're zooming by. I'm not at Lori's store, so I don't, anyways, but we just don't want to be looked at as that we're encouraging more. I think we're really going to get a lynching. Okay. Okay. If, unless anyone has any closing comments on that, I think um, we've got a plan of action there. Sarah's going to draft um, a brief statement or a brief letter that we can send to everybody here on the board for their approval and then send it off. Um, I think it's helpful. I think feedback is always a good thing. When we're talking to tourism staff, I think they'd like to hear from us, actually. Um, Will you okay. pass a motion Great. once we'll you see that letter session. then, Lori? Uh, good the next meeting, perhaps, once you've reviewed that letter, maybe you just approve the Can letter we, to be sent. Yeah, approve a okay. letter to be sent, reviewed by the, like, reviewed by the president, so that we, at least we have that, like, we don't want to wait a month. We don't want to wait a month. Okay, so, so I have a, a draft motion then, uh, a motion to send letter to the township on behalf of the BIA to inform Clearview Township that the Creamore BIA does not wish to promote the BIA area as a my motorcycle destination. Yeah, that, it's enough. Yeah. yeah, I think that's. Should we say further promote? Like since. I don't know if we want to say. I don't know if that's quite right. I, I, I think it's it's more specifically to this specific tourism promotion as opposed to promoting motorcycles because we're fine with that we're fine with motorcycles um, so maybe does not wish to participate people. in the simcoe county uh promotion yeah maybe that's it or i wouldn't even i just say that we'll not act as a motorcycle destination send a letter saying that 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 is not part of our marketing plan it doesn't jive with our marketing yeah. Heather, did you? I saw you shaking your head. Did you I have? I just want to. Uh, yeah, I'm waiting. I'll wait for the write up because I don't know. I I don't like it's. If everybody else votes and I don't, there's going to be a favor. That's fine. Um, I I have a very strong tourism head on, hat right and working with them, and I don't want to be the community that says we say no to motorcycles. So I'm not saying no to motorcycles. We just don't want any further promotion of the motorcycle. For the promotion, yeah. Not to mention, maybe we should be concentrating on trying to figure out our traffic jam and where to park everybody. I mean, there's major problems with just, we're, we're the at problem. A, the problem is, is our main streets are less than a kilometer long. That's the problem. I know, so we want, don't want to jam it up even further. We got to figure this out. Yeah. I think it's about the active promotion of an activity that we know our community generally doesn't appreciate right so i think that that's what this letter needs to convey is that we we don't want that and the reason we don't want that even though we recognize the value of the motorcycles and we're not against motorcycling but what we really do is what we really want to convey is our respect for our community and because of that we are not going to be motorcycles in our community no, an actor from this, of this particular. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Kayla, do you want to read back what you have if you've made any amendments? Yes. <laughs> so there's been a bunch of bumps and jives because I have unstable internet connection. However, this is what I've gathered. Okay. Uh, a motion to send a letter on behalf of the BIA to inform Clearview Township that Creamore BIA does not wish to actively promote the BIA area as a motorcycle destination at this time. Perfect. I, I don't think it's right. I'm sorry. Oh, I, don't really? think, I, I don't think it's right. I think it's just that we don't wish to participate in the Simcoe County with the promotions. I think it's 
I don't think we want to say that we don't want to be a motorcycle destination because certainly we will be to some folks and that's fine. It's just that we don't want to, we don't want to advertise it. BIA won't advertise it, but we're not telling Simcoe County not to advertise it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Include us. So just put the name of the promotion. I don't know what the name of the promotion is. I have I it right here. Okay. Um, but does this concept not take us beyond just this promotion? Like if, if it's just this promotion, are we going to have to deal with this again and again and again? Or are we just saying like, guys, we're just not going to promote ourselves for this particular activity? I just feel like it's too generalized if we say a motorcycle destination because that will alienate some of our businesses that do want to have the motorcycles here. So I don't want that to sound like we're not accepting or allowing motorcycles into our town in Especially any way. Especially when there are biz, like, is, like if, um, for example, if Creamer Springs puts in a motorcycle parking spot, not saying that we are, just saying, and then right. it would be, I, it just would be too um, conflicting. Okay. I'll be really mindful when we write the letter of all of this input. And we're all going to see it first. Okay. So, uh, that's the motion, more or less. And um, then do we have someone to put the motion forward? Nancy? And do we have a seconder? Somebody who wants to second the motion? Jen or Sarah? Okay, and all in favor? Everyone put their hands up. Who's in favor of writing the letter? Okay. So the motion's carried. Sorry, um, who seconded? The Hi, sorry. <laughs> I got kicked out. I'm back now. Who seconded the letter? Oh, Jen. Jen. And what was the, the promotion by Simcoe County called? Ride Simcoe County. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, so that brings us to the end of our agenda, unless anybody has anything else under new business or unfinished business mm -hmm. tonight. No? Okay. So our next meeting then is February 9th, 7 p.m. I look forward to seeing you there. I'd also like to um, just remind everyone that we may have some workshops that we're going to start to put together before the next meeting. So keep, keep uh, an eye out for emails that maybe we can put together another virtual workshop to talk about events, to talk about possibilities of budgeting and AGM for this year. We're going to take a lot of this stuff online so we don't have to spend so much time um, during the board meeting and we can actually, you know, do a workshop where we can just sort of brainstorm ideas for events and, and well, whatever is going to happen in 2021 that we'd like to, um, that we'd like to, to do. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. If there's an, anything else, um, we're going to adjourn the meeting tonight and we'll see you back here. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye now. Good meeting.